In this demonstration, you're going to learn more about uh, the different options that you have for uh, enabling pop-ups and the layers that are going to be involved in the pop-ups uh, and the content that's displayed in those pop-ups. So, all right, so in this case, you can see I've already created a map uh, with a few layers. Uh, these layers include a USA current wildfires layer that contains, and that's actually a group layer that contains a point layer for current incidents. Those are the points that you see here. There's also a current perimeters layer, which you can only see when you zoom in further. You can see the current perimeter information there. So that's going to be a polygon layer uh, for each of the um, uh, currently active wildfires. Those are part of a group layer. Of course, they are individual feature classes, but uh, they are part of a group layer called USA Current Wildfires. In addition to that, we have a uh, National Weather Service precipitation forecast layer and a USA Monthly and Seasonal Drought Outlook layer, as well as a base map. So your identify functionality is part of the Explore tool. It's on the map tab. When this tool is active, uh, it actually can perform multiple functions using your mouse or your trackpad, uh, allowing you to do things like zooming, zooming in, zooming out, panning, and identify operations. Now it's the identify operations that we're primarily interested in for this particular demonstration. So the identify operations are going to essentially display information about these layers in a pop-up window when you click a feature from that layer on the map. Um, now, if you click the drop-down arrow under the Explore tool, uh, you'll notice you have multiple options here. Topmost layer, visible layers, selectable layers, and selected and contents. Uh, we're going to start with selected and contents. So we're going to make that the active option. And so what that's going to do is it's when you click a feature on the map, um, it's going to look for features from the currently selected layer, which in this case is going to be USA Current Wildfires. So it's looking for selected in contents. Right now I have USA Current Wildfires selected in the contents pane. Now remember, this is a group layer. So when I click a feature on the map, let's say, for example, I click this point. So I'm clicking, uh, I clicked a point. But because this is a group layer and because I have the group layer selected, um, and of course this is selected in contents as my option here, um, I clicked a, a point, but I also clicked a polygon. Remember, there's a polygon attached to this point as well. So when I clicked that point, I was actually clicking two features. I was clicking the point and the polygon. And because I have uh, the group layer selected in the table of contents, it's actually going to find any layers or any features from any layers that are part of that group layer, which in this case there are two layers, current incidents and uh, current perimeters. So you can see that I have one feature from each of those layers uh, that has been um, uh, identified. And so I can uh, click on these individual features and get additional information uh, about each of those features that was clicked, whether it's a point or a polygon. All right, some overlap in that information as well. but. Uh, but because I have a group layer that's been selected here, it's actually, when I clicked, uh, found multiple features. Now, if instead, instead of selecting the group layer, if I had simply selected um, an individual layer from the group layer, then when I click the point, you'll notice that it only selects uh, the feature, the, the point feature that I selected or that I identified uh, on the map. And if I change that to current parameters, of course, it will select uh, or identify a feature from the perimeter layer. Oops. All right, now if I change this, for example, if I uh, then select USA Monthly and Seasonal Drought Outlook, now when I click on the map, you'll see that it identified a feature from that USA Monthly and Seasonal Drought Outlook, which has multiple categories here. And so that displayed information in the pop-up window about the feature that I clicked uh, containing information from the monthly drought outlook uh, layer. Now you have other options here as well. Uh, for example, if you select topmost layer, what that will do is essentially ignore what you selected in the table of contents. And in this case, my topmost layer is going to be current incidents. Now in this case, it ignores my group layer and uh, found current incidents uh, instead of current perimeters, even though I actually clicked both. So you have multiple options here. Yeah, other options include uh, visible layers. So, right, so in this case, now in this case, you'll notice that I have lots of visible layers. I've, I've turned visibility on for my active wildfires, 
for my precipitation forecast, drought outlook. So now when I click, you'll notice in this case, it actually displays information from all the layers where there was underlying data. So here we had uh, active wildfire information both at the point and polygon layer, as well as drought outlook information as well. Now if I zoom out a little bit, might be able to find one where we have a even better intersection here of everything. There we go. So let's, uh, for example, select this feature. Now you'll notice that it also included um, information from the precipitation forecast, which is amount by time, which is what you're seeing here. All right. So in this case, uh, because I've selected visible layers, what it will do when I click on that map, it will do the identify operation on any of the visible layers that are in my table of contents. Now, if I turn this precipitation forecast off and I click again, you'll notice now it doesn't display the attribute information from that layer. And that's simply because that layer, uh, the, the visibility for that layer has been turned off. And then we also have the option here of uh, selectable layers. So selectable layers are going, it's going to refer back to uh, this list by selection button. And you can see under list by selection, right now I only have two layers that have been selected here, current incidents, current perimeters. All right, so what that will do is when I do the identify operation, uh, it will only look at uh, any layers that have been marked as selectable, which in this case is only two layers. So when I click on a layer in this case, it only found one feature from one layer, right? And it only was looking it was only looking at these two layers because those are the only two layers that have been marked as selectable uh, in my table of contents. Yeah, now you do also have the option here of selecting no pop-ups as well. Uh, in that case, you simply would elect to not display pop-up information. Probably not what you want in most cases, but you know there may be some situations where that would be appropriate as well. All right, that's it for this demonstration. Thank you for joining me.